forth, back and forth for about two years. I was filing OIDs in the beginning, and I was one of the few people I know who actually got my OID refund. Um, Good but, on you. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I messed it up. Um, I, uh, I made a couple of mistakes. I was silent. They sent me a notice of taxes due for the entire amount, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I was silent, and I fell into dishonor. And since then, it's just gone downhill. They filed a they levied the rest of the money out of my account. They filed a lien against me. Um, and since then, they got me for frivolous filing. And I'm a, kind yeah. of a student. I'm a student of the, of the creditors and commerce uh, method of teaching. So, of course, you know, I, I've accepted that debt for value uh, three times. And I thought that maybe there was a problem with form, uh, not necessarily the substance. Um, you know, what needs to be sent along with it, the, the 1040V, uh, you know, all, all these things. And so I'm left wondering, why exactly have I not gotten my remedy? Is it, uh, you know, it's one of several things. Is the IRS simply testing me to see how good a creditor I can be? Absolutely, uh, they're testing you. You know, uh, did I leave something out uh, in form? Uh, just, I just have a lot of questions and no answers. Well, so God, right only now, knows. God only knows, and I'll tell you, the question you should be asking are to the IRS. And the first thing that I would ask the IRS, if they contacted you back and said there was a mistake with the document, do we want our money back? Mm-hmm. The first thing I would have said is I said, well, I, I would have asked, well, could you please tell me where the deficiency in the document is? Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, where I didn't know enough deficient? at the time. Maybe you all heard about it. Uh, about a year ago, a plane flew into the IRS building here in Austin, Texas. Uh, that was Austin, after- yeah. Yeah, just act. But that was the federal building. I actually met this uh, IRS agent in before that happened, of course, several months before it happened. Um, I, they invited me down, and again, I didn't handle it the way I thought I should handle it, knowing now what I know. But uh, I walked in, and, uh, and I asked a few questions, and she turned it around on me and simply said, okay, well, I don't know how you got paid that money, but now you owe it back to us. How are you going to do it? I said, well, I, I don't know. I guess I'll have to figure it out and get back to you. And so don't I had send you a bill. Week. Well, I, we've been that route. I, I sent them a bonded promissory note that came from a private banker. That seemed to make everything go away. I was fine for, for a year. I, I, I think I've missed something somewhere because even though they stopped calling me and they stopped sending me letters for an entire year, the lien wasn't gone. They're, so they're, I, they're, probably, they're probably hoping you're going to send in another bonded promissory note because they're going to collect on that one too. Well, they figure they I got a sucker them. here who's just going to keep sending them in promissory notes that they can collateralize or that they well, can Well, that's monetize. what I feel like. That's what I feel like. I feel like a cash cow maybe that they say, oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Maybe yep. they'll send some more if he doesn't understand what okay. he's doing. Okay. Did you send in a letter, obviously, with the bond of promissory note with instructions to settle the account? No, I didn't do that. Okay. That's, that's the first. The, so they just got a gift from you. I suppose, yeah. So that's one way of looking at it. So you may want to send them a letter to say, hey, uh, did you keep a photocopy of that bond of promissory note? Yes, I've got copies of everything I've sent. Good. Make another photocopy of it and send a cover letter with it saying, hey, remember when I sent you this and you kept it and never returned it? That was supposed to be for settlement of this account. Well, I've done that. Why didn't you do that? And that's what what I'm now instructing you to do. Did you think I was just gifting you money? Well, I I think I've proven to them over the last two years that, I I mean, I can threaten, but I don't follow through because I don't know what to do to actually... None of none of that was a threat. That was just saying, "Hey, remember this 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 note that I sent you that you kept?" Well, I've done that several times. I, I've sent them conditional acceptances. I've sent them, uh, you know, no, notice. But, uh, um, but specifically for that note, that's what I mean. Did you give them instructions to use that note to settle that account, and then contact them afterwards and say, "Hey, that note that you kept was for to settle this account. Why didn't you do it?" I didn't do that. But if I did it for the promissory note. I should probably do the same for the, for the three acceptances for value that uh, that they sent. Um, you know, they sent me the notices on, and I accepted it for value once, and then I realized that I made a mistake on it. I may have. I boxed in the numerical yep. amount, and there's a four corners rule there, so so, so I yeah. redid it. You you got to remove all presumption. You got to be very precise when you're contacting them and saying the photocopy of the promissory note that I've attached to this cover page was sent to you people. You never returned, which means you've, you've accepted it, offer, you know, law of offer and acceptance. Mm-hmm. This note was supposed to discharge this alleged debt and then have a photocopy of whatever debt they're claiming that you owe and then say that's the, that was the intent when that was sent in. Why didn't you set off this note against that debt? 
Well, I suppose I could do that, but I, I think I've done even one step better since, which was I asked them for a notice of a statement of account. You know, when I put zero there, and, and they defaulted, and, uh, and, and I got them in an agreement that I owe zero. Okay. And now they're still coming after you again? Well, yeah, because I filed three times. This was in 08, so I had to file for my 08 taxes, my own end taxes, and my 2010 taxes. And each yeah. time, we filed the OID. And, of course, their position is, well, you're not a bank. And I haven't raised any issues. You say, well, how can you prove that? Are you saying that I'm not a bank? Yeah, we haven't they, gone they, mean, they mean a registered bank, not a, not yeah. a banker. Yeah, well, they, I mean, they've got my money. I've got them in a contract, again, where I told them, well, if you don't release the funds, here's my account number. If you don't release the funds, you know, within so many days, you know, you're going to owe me twice as much. Yeah. And they defaulted. And I got, a, you know, the three-step uh, um, three process you know, the opportunity to cure, yep, and, and they just, them. yeah. And you then, you may, then you may want to learn how to put a civil, a civil claim together, put a statement of claim together, get it into civil court with all your exhibits and, and everything, and take that into civil court and actually take the IRS uh, to, to court and sue them. And it's a very, 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 very simple process, and it's even a lot of fun. <laughs> fun, all right. Um, Okay, well, is, is there anything that you teach? I'm kind of new at this. I mean, I only heard about you, again, a couple of days ago. Uh, somebody in CIC sent me the YouTube link. Um, ha, do you have any instructional videos on how you would go about doing that? Um, well, like I just said to the previous gentleman, uh, one of the things I would do is I would perfect my claim before I got there, which is, uh, which is a, com a commercial claim. Uh, and that's just following, uh, I, I revised and did a bunch of additions to like a Winston Schrout process for a commercial claim and perfecting a commercial claim against the person you're going after. And then I take that commercial claim and I enter that as an exhibit into a new, to a lawsuit that I take then into civil court. And that commercial claim, which is, the, which is the perfected private remedy, is the proof that you've already defaulted them on the private. And I think you're going to find that these people won't even file a statement of defense to your claim. They're probably going to lose. And as long, well, as, as, long as you can control the judge and not allow the judge to start defending the IRS when they don't reply, um, you're going to win. You're going to get a court order. Well, I was I was about to do that in camera, you know, on, on the private side. Uh, some people think that it is probably better since it's a private claim to go the private route and and send your notice, you know, in camera to the judge, yeah. mark confidential, private, all that stuff, instead of bringing it to a public venue. Um, well, how do you feel about that? Um, well, it's it's almost along the same lines as what I just said, and the, the whole point to that is uh, you got to remember that your private your private lien, like a, they call it a commercial lien, it, it is and it isn't. It's a perfected private remedy, which means that all you've done is you've gotten them, you you've contacted your adversary privately, administratively, and you've settled the matter before you even had to go to court. Right, right. right? That's what I now you to. have agreement of you have agreement to the parties before you even go to court. Well, now you've won there. Now it's just a rubber stamp for default judgment if you do it properly. So, yeah, whatever process you want to use to perfect administrative remedy first, do it. And then take that into the public courts to get a court order where they're going to be forced to pay you. All right, one last question. I've heard from, again, there's a lot of information. Um, what I don't have is a UCC filing on my claim, on my, 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 my substance. I don't and do I, them. I don't think they're necessary. Okay, so you you've had success with I mean we without the UCC filing. Well, I've had a lot of success getting rid of charges. Uh, we're still in the process of collecting on the on the civil claims, but uh, we know for sure that based on the civil claims that we've got in the courts right now, and some of them have been there for for months and months now, is that the other party, which is the government, the government that we're suing, um, they won't even file a statement of defense. They're sending their lawyers in to file stupid, ridiculous motions that the judge is allowing. And we're going to wind up having to add a couple of judges, I think, to our claim and take it to a higher court yet to make them learn their lesson once or twice. But uh, we already know they're not going to reply to anything. They're just going to try to file stupid motions to have the judge strike your claim from the record or something stupid like, oh, like claiming that you're, you're, uh, it's, frivolous, it's a frivolous and vexatious filing. You know, it's, it's just nonsense. But these lawyers, they know better. They, they, they actually can't file a statement of defense. You're going to win. Uh, okay, uh, you just reminded me of something. Let me just ask one last question real fast here. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to UCC 1-207, which, of course, uh, in the, uh, the Uniform Commercial Code, here in the States at least, do you all have the same Uniform Commercial Code up there? Yeah, the, the Uniform Commercial Code applies uh, uniformly. That's why it's called the Uniform Commercial Code. It applies anywhere where there's commerce uh, to do with the IMF nations, right? It was adopted okay. by all that. I've got my UCC handbook right here. I've read all through it. Um, that was a long. That was a couple of years ago when I decided, you know what, this is not something for the common man, 
Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't include any of it in my teachings. I, I would say go ahead and do it if you understand it. Uh, mm-hmm. But for the common man, uh, I, I, I prefer to call UCC, I call it trustee law. That's the mm-hmm. stuff the trustees need to know, and I'm not a trustee. So when an administrator well, gives an order to a trustee to do something, the trustees have to know UCC law and all this internal bullshit that has nothing to do with us. That's their jobs. We issue orders. That's what a director does, an, an administrator, right? Yeah. And then the, yeah. The, the, the troops do the work, and the troops are the ones that are supposed to know this shit. Well, I haven't used it since uh, it changed to 1-308, but I used to put on my tickets. I'd sign my name and then U period, D period, under duress, and underneath it, uh, UCC 1-207 without prejudice. And I got nine tickets dismissed, one right after the next, uh, including my Great. son driving without a license. Um, I've, I've got the evidence. Congratulations. I've got the, wow, yeah, that's great. great. Well, I mean, but, but I, I want to go back to that. When when it stopped working was when I got a fireworks charge. Fireworks, you know, who cares? But they wanted to charge me. And I, and I wrote 1-207 and or 1-308, and it didn't work, and I had to go through court and everything, and they charged me $1,500. Yep. I got rid of it by filing some tax documents. I still don't know what I did. This, this, I, was, this is what people have to realize. That the UCC is their code. This is all their laws, and they can choose to ignore it whenever they want. So well, it, may work some, it may work sometimes, but it may not work at all other times, and it may never work, period, for some people. To me, that's not a solution. If it's not consistent, it's not a solution. What do you think they were doing when they dismissed them? I know that I'm, I'm trying to take jurisdiction away no, from them. No idea. No idea. That would be making presumptions of what they were doing, and I, I don't do that. Who right, knows well, what they did? Maybe they just didn't want to deal with you, or maybe they actually obeyed the UCC, <laughs> but they don't other times. It's hard to say what they do, so I just don't care. Well, I'll keep doing it. I just wish I knew I understood what it, how it worked. You know. Yeah, it's not it's not for us to understand. It's their system. It's their system. All right. Well, thank you, Dean. Okay. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. Hey, you know, before we get on to the next question, do you want to get a drink of water or anything? Who's that? You. Oh no, I got a big, big, giant bottle of pH balanced water right beside me already. Okay. Good. Um. And let's see here. We've got a lot of human lines, so I'm going to move right along. Um, North New Jersey. Go ahead. Did you have a question for Dean Cliff? Oh, wait one second. I know what I wanted to say. Uh, if you, I've, I'll go over to that freemanitoba.com website and join in on the forum there. They have a section with a lot of documents that are posted also that follows it with what Dean's talking about. Yeah, they're actually they're, so, they're building a great little site over there. Actually, we're hoping to expand it and actually get some uh, some lessons on there and turn that into an actual home page where people can go to watch the videos and everything as well. Ah, uh, you're cutting in and out. What are you doing? Sorry. You're cutting in and out. Yeah, I, I, you're kind of cutting out a little bit as well. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. I'm Hi. North Jersey. <laughs> okay, Hi. go ahead. Oh. Um. I wanted to ask, maybe this simplistic, these are simplistic questions, I don't know, because I'm new at all this. Simple is the, great. <laughs> but I'm in the middle, I'm already in the middle of a court case. Um, I'm being sued for a credit card debt. Okay. So I've already, you know, done whatever, made wild motions, as I guess what you would call that I've already contracted. Can I, in the middle of this case, now turn around and say, that I'm the duly authorized administrator of my account? You probably, or have I already sort of contracted? I don't well, you, you probably don't need to because now you're, you're getting into, this is civil court. You're being sued by a credit card company, right? Yeah. Most well, a of, lawyer's law firm. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, you're, you're being sued. Um, mm-hmm. Most of the duly authorized stuff to do with the administrators and everything is, is more so relevant when you're, when, you're in, uh, when you're fighting criminal charges. Mm-hmm. When, okay. the state, when the state is coming against you, right? That's uh, because it's kind of two different. Uh, even though they're related, they're, they're almost like two different branches of law. One is one's an internal tribunal where there's no injured party. The one you're in, there's a credit card company claiming to be an injured party. Now right. here's the problem: the credit card company cannot prove an injury, and people don't know how to raise that 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 uh, that point properly. Um, there's actually a wonderful book on that, and she's probably listening tonight. Uh, and it's even it's old material has been updated, and that's Mary Croft's uh, stuff on contacting the credit card company and, and asking them to provide, number one, to provide proof of an injury. 
to provide proof that they even loaned you money in the first place and it wasn't your own promissory note that funded the loan and to prove where the money that they loaned you came from. Just ask okay. them three simple questions and you can do that in court. Okay. 